Welcome to NFL Live. Breaking news today out of Pittsburgh. Adam Schefter is here. What can you tell us, Adam? Laura, the Pittsburgh Steelers have named Russell Wilson as their starting quarterback for the opening game against the Atlanta Falcons. Not a surprise. This is what most people thought. Mike Tomlin had said all along that Russell Wilson was in the pole position. And now pole position has crossed the finish line, at least for the opening game. And Russell Wilson, not Justin Fields, will be starting at Atlanta against the Falcons. Yeah, we're so glad you're with us today on NFL Live. Thanks for joining us. Adam's here all show. Lewis Riddick and Booger McFarland as well. Let's get right to Mike Tomlin's explanation on his decision to name Wilson the starter today. It was a difficult decision, but not difficult in a negative way, to be quite honest with you. It was difficult in a positive way. The de decision was difficult because of what they're capable of doing. The um, decision was difficult because of how they have conducted themselves as opposed to the things that they fall short in in terms of capabilities or negative conduct. Obviously, Russ's resume is a unique one in terms of length and success, and um, you know that tends to play a factor in the decision making, but not from a decision maker's perspective. It's just you know fruit of his labor. Um, you know he's seen a lot and done a lot, and I think it was reflected in the way he he played and conducted himself. Well explained as you would expect. We now welcome in our Steelers reporter Brooke Pryor. You've been there for all of training camp, Brooke. They've now made the decision. What's the reaction been there today? You know, this is largely what everyone in the locker room expected. Everyone who has been been around the team expected. Mike Tomlin said he made the decision today, brought both quarterbacks in at the same time for a meeting in his office, and that's when he gave them the news that Russell Wilson would be QB1, and he said they handled it like professionals. And even though Mike Tomlin waits the in-stadium work more than he waits maybe practice work. He said that Russell Wilson won the job because he was comfortable with what he saw out of him in practice. He said that he's had these intense practices to make it more of a, a simulation, a game-like atmosphere, so there would be little left to speculation. Although he did say he's happy to let us speculate about how much we may be seeing Justin Fields still on the field despite not being the starting quarterback. He said that Fields' mobility is something the Steelers want to weaponize and that we could see him in some packages because they can't afford to let that stay on the bench. That's going to be fascinating, Brooke, to see how they use him, if they use him when. If he comes on the field, aren't defenses going to know what he might do? Either way, we'll keep an eye on it. Thanks so much to Brooke Pryor for joining us here on NFL Live. All right, Lewis, so you heard the reasoning there from Mike Tomlin. You've had a lot to say about this before we knew the decision was happening. You agree with Russ giving the Steelers the best chance to win? No, not necessarily. I don't, but look. Mike Tomlin has a lot more information at his disposal than I do. He was with these guys every single day. And although he says he tends to weight the stadium work much more heavily than he does the practice work, he's quite honestly made his decision based on the opposite because Russ didn't have a whole lot of stadium work, but he did have a lot of practice work, and he has an extensive resume that Mike Tomlin also alluded to. So to me, it sounds like absent Justin Fields coming out and being Patrick Mahomes, he wasn't winning this job anyway. It was really all geared towards Russell has to do something dramatic in order to lose it, and then Justin has to do something dramatic in order to win it outright come week one. Now, now that we've got that out of the way and we can get through week one and, and Russ is the starter and maybe Justin has some packages and what have you, the question to me still remains, how long does he stay the starter? What does Russ actually have left? He can know the offense up, up and down, left and right as much as he wants. Is he a playmaker, though? Can he move the ball down the field and put them in the end zone? Can he make plays out of structure when it breaks down and Arthur doesn't have the absolute perfect call, that being Arthur Smith, the offensive coordinator? Can he do those kinds of things? Because remember now, it's not like they're playing in the Bucksmont League High School Division, <laughs> which is the league I played in. He's playing the in the AFC North, which is one of the toughest divisions. Yeah, it was okay back in the day. He's playing in one of the toughest divisions in all of football against some defenses that are ferocious. So he better be able to make some plays and not just know the playbook. So that, to me, I think is what all of us should be watching as we move through the first quarter of the season. You know, Lewis, I will agree with you that this decision was almost premeditated. I, I think when, you know, Mike Tomlin came out and says that Russ is in pole position, essentially what he was saying is, Russ is going to be my starting quarterback unless Justin Fields comes in and just wows me. Now, here's what I'll disagree with you. I think Russell Wilson gives him the best opportunity to win. 
because ultimately you have to evaluate this. Both of them have been sketchy from the pocket as far as being able to consistently throw the football down the field. So here's what you're weighing. You're weighing the ability of Justin Fields to use his legs and athleticism to make plays versus Russ's experience and ability not to turn the football over and allow this Pittsburgh team to thrive with their defense. Let's also not forget, they're probably going to start two, maybe even three rookies, depending on health, on the offensive line. That means you got to have a quarterback that can get these young guys lined up from a protection standpoint, that can make sure everybody knows where they're going, and who can do that better than a veteran quarterback. So I truly understand the upside of Justin Fields. I get it. Everybody is wild with his ability to run around with his legs. So was Chicago, so much that they got rid of him. You have to be able to not turn the football over, move the offense up and down the field, and allow your team to play complementary football. And I think when you total all of that up, Mike Tomlin and offensive coordinator Arthur Smith are basically saying this, Russell Wilson and his experience give our team the best chance from an offensive standpoint to play complementary football. Are we going to miss some of those splash plays and that improvisational stuff that Justin Fields can do? Sure. But can we win and win at a more consistent level with Russell Wilson? I tend to agree with the decision that Mike Tomlin and Arthur Smith have made. So, look, to me, it sounds like what you're saying is this, that Pittsburgh has so many weapons and such a dominant offensive line that all Russ needs to do is just be a point guard and just kind of like hand it off to Najee, throw it out on the perimeter uh, to, you know, to George Pickens, get it to Pat Fryermuth, and he doesn't really – look, I, I just don't – I don't see it like this. Russ can't be just a game manager in this offense. I don't think they're this – that – I don't – well, what I'm saying is this. I don't think he's that dominant to where Russ cannot – or rather can get away with not being a playmaker. And I'm not saying – we're not talking about just splash plays off schedule, four or five second plays where he's running around and trying to create something, you know, like he used to back in his days in Seattle. I'm not talking about that. I'm just saying about this, okay? Can he get the ball out of his hands quickly and still be able to push it down the field, put it where it needs to be put, and do it on a consistent basis? I don't, we'll see if he can do that. I don't have the most faith in that. And that's where I'm saying now, Justin Fields, look, he has shown steady progression throughout this offseason, through training camp, through the preseason games. And from by all accounts, from what I know out there in Pittsburgh, he's continuing to still make very, you know, marked advancements in terms of his comfort in this offense. I just don't think this is going to last very long. I think he's going to be in there sooner than, rather than later. And this may not last very long, but I think today, Lewis, I trust Russell Wilson and his experience and his ability. Yeah, sometimes a sack is better than turning the football over. I, I get that. And so right now today, I trust Russell Wilson, his ability to lead this offense to play complimentary football more than I do Justin Fields. And I'm willing to sacrifice some of that athleticism and those splash plays when it's third and seven, he can take out of the pocket and get me 10 yards and move the first down. I'm willing to sacrifice that knowing that my defense will be pretty good. Yeah, you don't have a, 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 a wealth of playmakers like you're talking about on the offensive side of the football. But you know what? You can punt the football and play to this defense. We're not asking you to score 40. But you can't turn the football over and put this defense in disadvantageous situations. And do you hear this debate, Laura? You hear this? I you hear do. what's going on right now? We got Lewis pro Justin Fields. We got Booger pro Russell Wilson. This isn't going to let up in Rus mm. unless Russell Wilson plays really well and they keep winning. The moment that that doesn't happen, this kind of debate is going to keep going on and on and on. It's interesting, too, because if you look at the schedule, guys, seven of the Steelers' first nine opponents finished under 500 in 2023. Nice way to start, right? But they finished the season with all six division games in their final eight games, along with playing the Eagles and Chiefs. Not quite a walk in the park. Mm. Maybe they do make a change around that time. We'll have to see. All right.